I got sent this new headphone amp from SMSL, the HO200. It's priced at $400. SMSL stands for Shuang Mu Sanlin Technology Company and came about in China in 2009. Followers will know they feature heavily in the headphone amp DAX sphere. Would it be a sphere or a space? Why not a cube? Anyway, it's pretty conventional looking, but with an all alu case, which is often unusual in amps at this price, and it's definitely a very good quality. You often get sheet type metal, wraparound metal. Working right or left, you'll notice that you've got an on off selector. Gain is selectable by high, mid and low. You'd obviously use low for IEMs, which are easier to drive. There is a selector for using in pre mode, so you'd be using as a preamp to connect a power amp, maybe with a power amp for some desktop speakers, or HPA, headphone amplifier. Incidentally, Shuang in Chinese means cool or refreshing. Obviously, it's then got a volume dial and three types of headphone outputs, 4.4 millimeter balance, not the usual 3.5 millimeter in-ear monitor type, then a traditional quarter inch unbalanced and a four pin XLR balanced headphone output. You'll notice when you plug your jacks in into the 4.4 millimeter socket, as opposed to the normal 3.5 millimeter types, you have extra rings on the jack which is a giveaway to balanced connections because you need more connections for balanced infrastructure. So the four pin outputs on the XLR connection will be for left and right positive phase and left and right negative phase. And someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think this type of headphone connection has a ground wire, unlike one of the pins on a conventional analog output of a three pin XLR plug where you have positive phase, negative phase, and then you have a ground wire as well. So rearwards, back panel, it's much simpler. Just two sets of XLR balance connections, one for inputs from your DAC and another to output to your power amp, obviously, if you select pre at the front rather than selecting HPA. Juiced up, in inverted commas, power lead is there, on off switch there. Ultimately though, the reason why we do this is sound quality because all of these features, technicality, how to use it are means to an end for what it's going to sound like. So you can go on to the cows come home and in this regard, this SMSL has ridiculous power for a headphone amp, 6 watts at 16 ohms and 3 watts at 2 ohms, enough to get rid of your tinnitus or sort out your block, your station tubes. Obviously only joking, I'm no doctor. <laughs> And don't you won't take advice there but be really careful with headphones and turning up volume because this thing is very powerful and you could easily do yourself damage if you misuse it also another thing to say is that it's described as very low distortion with a stated 20 hertz to 500 kilohertz frequency response and competition wise it's going to be the likes of ifi or ifi i think they prefer to call themselves and something like a shit Jotunheim 2, shit, S-C-H-I-I-T, I think, not the way that everyone else would think it's spelled. <laughs>as your first kind of novice headphone setup if you like you could use something like an audio quest dragonfly cobalt and pair it with a jds labs atom amp cheapest chips about 100 pounds just over 100 dollars and it will much improve the sound quality of your laptop macbook or phone's output and i've said before you just use the audio quest as an extra dac from your your digital device in my case, I use a MacBook connector called an AudioQuest Dragon Tail, which you know is going to be available in other guises and cheaper 
guys is. And then all you do is use a 3.5 millimeter to two RCA cable from the Dragonfly into the Atom. But this SMSL is basically the next step up and self-evidently it's gonna suit a desk-based situation or proposition. Solid, muscular, sturdy, and what can I use for L? Lusty, does that sound a bit dodgy? Anyway, yeah, it takes things up a notch in the quality of the rather functional you know, and plasticky Atom, which is okay for in your suitcase hotel use but for home, you want something more, don't you damn move. So I've been swapping back and forth between the excellent Denifrips Ares 2 DAC and RME's ADI2 DAC FS, using this HO200, also using a Cord Qtis, all of which I featured in my previous DAC shootout type video. And this is good for me because I can try and get the best balance between different gear and also I'm trying to find out in detail what all of these DACs and different bits of kit are about because in future videos I can really pinpoint what they do. I reached out to Hi-Fi Man as part of this video and they've loaned me two pairs of headphones and I want to give this brand a thumbs up in this video too because the quality and definition that they offer, the transient attack of their headphones and the kind of everythingness in music is something that I really like in their brand. And I think this is down to the technology they use, electrostatic and planar magnetic headphone systems. And the ones that I really like in that respect are the J2 headphone system, which is a pair of headphones with an electrostatic headphone amplifier and their HE1000 version 2s, which I use with a DCS Bartok, the types of headphones you want for people that are gonna spend a fair amount. They're, they want detail, they want transient attack, and they want that level of dynamics in the music. Some of the headphones in this test though are a bit more price friendly and something that will suit the quality of this SMSL. The lesser priced of the two Hi-Fi Mans is just about price matched. And interestingly though, all of them show off what this headphone amplifier can do. Now I don't know if there's any technical basis to this, but I've always found that you can get away with spending less on headphone systems than comparable quality hi-fi for that similar immersive sound. And that's probably because of the lack of room interaction, maybe the closeness of the driver, the circumoral nature of headphone use too. But I definitely don't think I'd have to correct myself on this thinking. Also, I think something of the directness of sound, which is why I love trying out headphone systems like these that often reveal things that hi-fi just can't reveal. So all these headphones aren't that demanding to drive and possibly I'm not really maxing or challenging this SMSL, but just using the RME alone, comparatively, there's a rawness in tone, which is reflected into the headphones, not as a DAC itself, but its headphone output. And with this SMSL amplifier, with double the RME's output power, and considering things like distortion and crosstalk, amongst a whole host of other interacting factors, is in all likelihood accounting why the SMSL clearly sounds the better amp using its headphone out rather than the RMEs. So what I noticed is that when tracks fade out in volume right at the end, you know, when the volume dies, all the instruments sound more full, involving and projected right up until the music goes quiet. And also the sound is more dynamically flowing and liquid and with vocals harmonically, there isn't any treble air or you know that feeling of treble infringing on your listening pleasure with a lower noise floor which sometimes is a kind of cliche comment but it's true here tone also is more on the mark bang neutral 
and it becomes an easier listen and you get a slight improvement in a fuller sound. Against using the Atom, this SMSL is a lot more dynamic in bass, it's pretty obvious. The Atom is lazier and sloppier, relatively speaking, in each intonation of a bass note. It's a bit like a school dinner lady ladling down a slop of semolina into your bowl at school. And I'd say that considering the SMSL's price against the Atom, it is worth it. Also, this amp is probably up there around the quality of the original shit Jotunheim version one, which I tried some time back, and I'd need to do A to B to say which is the improver. These have got everything, I think. Yeah. Everything, I'm just... Everything, well, yeah. Way better. Yeah. Rado SR225s, which are my headphones and I've had them for some time, as well as Adam Audio's SP5s, they're both great headphones for this amplifier. The Adam Audio is more neutral if that's your thing, but they both show off this amp for what it can do. And if you really want to find out, try something like these $1,300 newish designed Hi-Fi Man HE R10Ds. Hi-Fi Man don't often do dynamic driver types, but these closed back headphones use their topology diaphragm driver technology, which is essentially nanoparticle coatings over the surface of the driver to shape sound waves. Sound wise, they are bumped in the mids and bass with a nice treble as the frequency response curve will show us, but they sound more dynamic and sound stage is much wider to the Adam Audios probably in part due to the larger internal cup spaces, which allow more internal reflections. But obviously much more impressive, the HE R10 planar versions, obviously as you'd expect, because they're much pricier. But they're easily the most impressive headphones I've had to review, as again, not surprising considering the price. But this SMSL isn't really exposing any flaws of itself when used with these R10s, which is a measure of this amp. The mid bass bump goes away to the D version, but the speed, transient detail and attack to music and soundscaping is just sublime. It's right up my street with these headphones. I don't think I've heard headphones that create as much width ways dispersion before, but with all those magnetic, sorry, planar magnetic qualities that I like. Terrific headphones. <laughs> Stillness over the water The traumatized heavy waters I used to be so young and free But now I'm bound by the bond For a long time, and I've only got to do it. Brain is formed by choices, be fast and by the water, see shores, the sails will. Anyway, thanks for watching my little video. I hope you got something out of it. Please like, comment and subscribe and share your experiences in the comments. What do you own? What do you like? And what do you think is the best?